I can do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Look. Howdy. Hey. I'm Hi, everybody. <laughs> I just came off stage. If I look like all sweaty and gross, it's because I just got off stage. So. <laughs> yeah. And, and your fans are out here. You all even know it's sheep. Anyways, this guy just got off stage at the California. This is Jinx Jones. And this is Raw Vlogcast, where we keep it real, authentic, and I talk with people who are willing to share their passion. I wish I have a video on this vlogcast for you. This man just tears up the floor. You have so many different styles of how you play. So oh, tell us you. what got you started? Who inspired you Gosh, way back well, when you were a little jinx? Yeah, when I was a little jinx. Well, I was lucky. I grew up in a time when like playing electric guitar was like the coolest thing you could be. It's like being an astronaut or something, right? And I couldn't be an astronaut. So uh, playing electric guitar is really cool. And it's kind of, you know, I started when I was a little kid. You're right about that. I started when I was very young. And I was fortunate to learn by playing with really, really great musicians. That was the best school, the best education I could have had. So and, how did you get fortunate with that? I mean, so um, who, ins who did you see that made you go, hmm, can't be an astronaut? I'll <laughs> play the guitar. Well, you know, uh, I grew up in a time where there was a whole lot of people around that you could look at and say, wow, you know, this is, um, I'll tell you one of the people that inspired me early on, and probably inspired many, many people, is Jimi Hendrix. And when I was about 12 years old, I remember hearing Jimi Hendrix's music and thinking, he's really free. Mm. And I, I thought that freedom is what I want. I want that. And it was really before I could form any solid musical ideas or have any understanding of what he was doing. But it, even at that age, I could hear his music and tell he's completely free. And I knew that he played songs differently every time he played them and he expressed himself in the moment. And that always appealed to me. And I think that's one of the things that drew me. And there were many, many other uh, great musicians that influenced me. And I... Um, Early on, I was able to hear great jazz guitar players. I felt the same way about them when I heard Kenny Burrell and Wes Montgomery and George Benson and people like that. Oh, just a little bit of everybody. Yeah. So, like I said, you know, uh, back when I was a kid growing up, I mean, you could turn on a radio anywhere and hear fine guitar work. And it really, um, it continued to challenge me. And then I started uh, playing, I had a job cutting lawns when I was 13. And Denver, Colorado, my hometown, I had a job cutting lawns. It was very hot there in the summertime, about 90, 100 degrees. And uh, then I got a job as a bus boy. And that was even harder work because, I mean, you know, just it was like a Sunday at a pancake house. It was like oh, it was really shit. hard work, you know. And then um, Sunday after and church, then I, was coming you, know, in. I, you know, at a young age, shortly after that, I got a job playing in a nightclub. And I thought, well, it's air conditioned in here, <laughs> you know. And, you know, I don't have to clean messy tables with, you know, syrup spilled syrup them. on it and stuff. So I thought, well, this is, this is pretty nice. And, um, and I, um, you know, I started playing at nightclubs and I got to tour a little around, you know, where I lived in the uh, Rocky Mountain area. Um, then, uh, you know, shortly after that, I was very much into R&B and soul music at the time. Uh, we used to call it funk music at the time, and it was really just this amazing new magic door that I opened up. And uh, I was able to play with some musicians who were just ten times better than anyone I've ever played with. And so I played in wow. um, a lot of a lot of those clubs, and I really learned so much from that experience. Not just the great musicians I played with, but the whole vibe of you know you have to keep people dancing and having a good time and and uh, part of the and, entertainment of it all right and and and, um, and you got you got to learn how to groove and um i learned to play rhythm guitar doing that because you, you know you really uh a lot of the a lot of the songs we were playing had wonderful amazing rhythm guitar parts so i got to learn from that experience and you know so i i anyway uh I ended up in, I lived in Hollywood for a few years. I went out there with a band, you know, to make it big. I <laughs> uh, lived in Hollywood for a few years, got to, got to tour with some, some groups. Uh, I was just telling someone in, earlier tonight, the first time I ever came to the Bay Area was in 1984. And uh, I was in a band in Hollywood called the Tellerays. It was a rockabilly band and a good band. And uh, we were hooked, we got a new manager who also managed uh, Willie DeVille and Mink DeVille. 
and they were putting together the West Coast tour, so we became their opening act. And the first time I ever came to this part of the country was we had a gig at a place called the Cotati Cabaret. Oh, yeah. And yes. I've never been here before, and uh, so I kind of uh, kind of liked it. And we played in San Francisco at a club called Wolfgang's on that tour. And, um, and yeah, I one day, you remember, but you and, remember that? Yeah, oh yeah, I remember all, every bit of that. And and one day I got on a city bus in San Francisco and just rode around and just mm -hmm. like I've never seen San Francisco. I want to see what it's like. So I said, mm, I like this place. So and, and ended up moving here, um, and so I've been here for a while. And East like Bay guy, huh? I I will. I lived in the city for a while. I live in the East Bay now, mm -hmm. Oakland. Pretty. That's another great music area. It, it's mm -hmm. a great music area. So, any fun stories or kind of crazy stories that kind of let us know a little bit about your passion? And... Well, uh, well, I, I can tell you an interesting story that's recent. So, okay, I, that's so great. Around uh, March of 2020, this thing came along called the pandemic. Uh, and, yeah. um, so, musicians like myself that were used to working 200 dates a year, all of a sudden, all those nightclubs closed up. All of those theaters, all of those, out, everything, just, you know, and I, my whole life I'd never gone without playing music, and it was kind of a strange experience, and I'm sure a lot of musicians felt that way. Yeah. So, um, anyway, I was, you know, just at home kind of uh, listening to music. I had time to just relax and think about, think about music in a different way, because I went race into the next gig, and I was thinking, well, you know, me, I'd like to record a jazz record, so, um, and well, that's going to be hard because there's no studios open. Musicians can't even be in the same room together. So, and there were a lot of musicians that I knew from different parts of the United States. So trying to get them all in the same place at the same time would have been very difficult. So uh, what I did was I got a kind of a modest home studio and learned kind of the rudiments of how to do digital audio recording. Uh -huh. and, learned and, a whole know, lot. A, <laughs> uh, I think a direct box for 130 bucks on Sweetwater and started... Um, and I started recording songs while I couldn't record with the other people. So I'd literally have a kind of a metronome or a click track that would go, ding, ding, you know, keep the time. And I'd play all the parts to the songs and then I would send them to somebody else's studio, you know, a drummer in Denver, Colorado, you know, somebody else in Southern California, different people, and they'd record their parts in a home studio. So the trick was we had to make it sound like, even though we we're recording it at different times, different places, we had to make it sound like we were all in a room together at the same time. So that was uh, the most recent album that came out in 2021 called Blue Gardenia. And it's a collection of like jazz songs that really have meant a lot a to me. A whole and, album that and, you did that way. Yeah, whole album. Blue and Gardenia, Blue that Gardenia, is yeah. so cool. So that was a shameless self-promotion, folks. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. Wow, I, there is a few good things that came out. People got very creative and those juices were flowing and now you guys are all out playing. Yeah. How can we follow you? Uh, well, you can go to jinxjones.com, my website, and there's a schedule there. So if you want to come see a live show, you can also find uh, all of that music, like I was saying, Blue Gardenia and a lot of other recordings I've done. You can find those on YouTube, you know, the, YouTube Spotify, awesome. Amazon, uh, Apple Music, you know, anywhere you like to get your music. Uh, they used to have this thing called CDs back in the day. <laughs> you should still get those. Yeah, yeah, we can. You know, way back in the old days, they had these things called CDs, and so they still have those. But, you know, for those of you who streaming music, you can just look up uh, Jinx Jones, Blue Gardenia, and uh, listen to some of it. And and uh, But I don't know, I, I really enjoy playing a variety of music, as, as you've seen, and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the music I do is rockabilly, but... You know, it's it's like years of that experience of playing with other people. It just it all joins together in the music. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, anything you'd like to share with the audience? You know, words you live by or something that just speaks about you. I thought you weren't going to ask me any hard questions. No. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. Well, I, I think just you know, for anybody out there, I hope. Um, you know, I hope there's uh, younger people that are like me when I was young and they're wanting, wanting to play to music free. and they, you know, they get the opportunity to play with people that have more experience than them that, that will teach them and help them grow into the artist they want to be. And I mean, that really is true of anybody in any kind of whatever your muse may be, whatever, you, however you express yourself. 
um, just to you know keep uh, keep thinking artistically and you know I actually started off I was gonna be an artist I was gonna be a cartoonist when I was a little kid and so <laughs> You know, there's one thing that's kind of common in, in all of the arts, and it's kind of having this idea in your mind that you want to create into something, whether it's a painting, or you want to write a poem, or you want to write a book, or you want to create a piece of music, or even like you want to play a solo when you're playing with other musicians and you want to make up something that's never been done before. So, you know, just, just I think, you know, just keep expressing yourself and, and uh, let that artistic statement that you have in your mind come out and share it with the world. Oh my God! Awesome. So, so anybody looking at this, con, I want to come see him. They can go. Hey, can I come on up and play with you? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends on where I'm playing. I don't know. Um, but uh, but anyway, I invite people to come out and and uh, check out some of our music. You know, I get to play with. There's a Bay Area's got a lot of really good musicians. In case yes. you don't know that. There's a lot of great musicians out here. I am so fortunate to get to play with musicians like I played with this evening yeah. or that I play with on, on my show. So anyway, uh, again, if you go to the website, Jinx Jones, J-I-N-X, J-O-N-E-S, shameless self-promotion, folks. You go to my website, uh, there's a schedule there. So, you know, if you live in the San Francisco area, I'm usually playing around. I'm going to be playing back in Denver in December. Wonderful. There at the Oriental Theater. So anyway, anyone that's checking this out, check out this music and... And remember, Blue Gardenia. Yeah. And all the other good stuff he's got out there. Thank you so much Thank for you. sharing with us. Thanks. That's a wrap. He was playing with the Blues Defenders at the California and Santa Rosa. We're going to be seeing him a lot. Cool. All right. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Thanks.